technology and its applications in this video we are going to study about biotechnology applications in agriculture about green revolution as well as some of the advantages of genetically modification in plants about bt cotton and pest resistance plant where we learn about rnai interference so these all are the very important topics from the point of examinations let us understand what are the biotechnological applications in agriculture so options that can be thought for increasing the food production so what are the some of the important options that can help us to increase the production of food more so first one is agrochemical based agriculture so in agrochemical based agriculture here we use mainly pesticides so that insects cannot harm the crops right field okay then organic culture here in organic culture we use organic things such as cow dung cow dung is most commonly used as organic we use cow dung as fertilizers which has lot of nutrients right then third one is genetically engineered crop based agriculture in this we basically change or improve the gene such as golden rice so golden rice high has high vitamin value right so it is basically genetically engineered so we change it according to our convenience right this is uh, what the genetically engineered crops it has also lot of nutrients as example for golden rice there are some important points which have to be noted as well as some important knowledge about the green revolution so let us learn each of them so a large increase in crop production in developing countries achieved by the use of artificial fertilizers pesticides and high yielding crop varieties so there is a large increase in the crop production in the developing countries so what are the main reasons for the crop production which is large in the developing countries so it is mainly due to the use of artificial fertilizers pesticides pesticides which pesticides which do not allow the insects to and high yielding crop varieties so there is a program launched in 1960s basically to boost the crop production to boost the crop production so this is the green revolution so that there can be high yielding crop varieties and there is a large food supply to the growing population okay the green revolution succeeded in tripling food supply but it was not enough to feed the growing population as the green revolution succeeded in tripling the food supply means it was capable to supply the food three times the greater before it was earlier tri tripling the food supply but actually it was not enough to the growing population as the population was growing day by day the food was necessary day by day so the green revolution succeeded for some extent but it was not completely enough for, for the people for their survival chemicals are often too expensive it is required to go for alternative use of genetically modified crops is a possible solution as we all know that the rate of agrochemicals are very high so chemical pesticides insecticides are very very high means they are very expensive so we need to go for another solution so it is really not expensive and easy and is a good solution so it is the genetical modified crops use of genetical modified crops is a good solution as it has many advantages okay so gen what is first of all you should understand what is genetical modified crops the crops the basic example of a genetical modified crops is a golden rice golden rice rice has a high vitamin value right so by the use of genetical modified crops we crops we change the gene according to our convenience for the good purpose okay this is what happens then organisms whose genes have been altered by manipulation through genetic engineering are called as genetically modified organism so what are genetically modified organisms this is the one of the very important question so organisms such as plant bacteria fungi animals their genes have been altered 
according to our convenience in the genetic engineering this is called as genetically modified organisms okay then high percentage of food crops such as maize rice sugar cane etc are genetically modified so mainly maize rice corn soya bean many things have been used by genetically modification so many high percentage of food crops have been genetically modified understand what are the advantages of genetically modification in plants so advantage of genetical modification in plants first advantage is made crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses like cold drought etc so in genetical modification the crops are made more tolerant to the abiotic stresses first of all you should understand what are abiotic stresses abiotic stresses like temperature light soil this they are more tolerant to such stresses like cold if the if the temperature increases then the survival of crops is really what dangerous but by the use of genetical modification the crops are more tolerant to such type of changes such type of environmental changes they can withstand right this is what happens when we use advantage is reduce reliance on chemical pesticides yes reducing the reliance on chemical pesticides is very necessary if you use more chemicals in agriculture then there is a loss of fertility it is really harmful it is even harmful for the human beings for the continuous usage of chemical pesticides so it is necessary to reduce the use of chemical pesticides so it will reduce advantage of genetical modification in plants then help to reduce the post harvest losses insect attack the field then what happens then there is a reduction in crop varieties there is no high yield crop crop varieties and there is a reduction in food supply right when we use the genetical modify modification then then it will reduce the post harvest losses okay increased efficiency of mineral usage by plants then plants can take more minerals which is very 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 advantage right then enhanced nutritional value of food the food we get has more nutritional value example golden rice which has high vitamin a enriched rice so we get more nutritional food so that we can eat bt cotton will understand about bt cotton so bt cotton is a genetically modified insect resistant variety of a cotton bacillus thuringiensis produces protein that kill insect such as lepidopterans coleopterans and diapterans so bacillus thuringiensis is very necessary so there is some it produces some strains of bacillus thuringiensis produces the crystalline proteins that are very important as they kill the insects such as lepidopterans commonly known as tobacco bud worm army worm whereas coleo opterans which is beetles diapterans diapterans which are normally flies and mosquitoes so it will kill these type of insects which will harm the crops okay then protein produced by b thuringiensis contain toxic insecticidal protein in inactive form so the protein which is produced by bacillus thuringiensis basically contains the toxic okay toxic insecticidal protein okay which is present in inactive form it is present in inactive form not it is but not it is active so basically you might have the question if the bacillus thuringiensis have the toxic insecticidal protein then why it will not kill itself the main reason why it will not kill itself because it is in the inactive form and to become active form it must react with the alkaline ph then only the insect can die okay so toxic insecticidal protein require alkaline ph for activation so basically the b thuringiensis is in inactive form to get it into the active form first of all it must react with the alkaline ph ingest the inactive toxin the toxin become active due to alkaline ph of gut which solubilizes the crystal so 
when an insect ingest insects such as coleopterans diapterans lepidopterans ingest this inactive toxin the toxin which is inactive okay then what happens then the toxin becomes active because in the insect it has alkaline ph in the gut of the insect they have alkaline ph when the inactive toxin react with the alkaline ph then it becomes the active okay very simple the activated toxin bind to the surface of a mid gut epithelial cell and create pores that cause cell swelling and lysis eventually cause death of insects so the toxin which is activated due to the alkaline ph of gut activated toxin binds to the surface of a mid gut mid gut basically has the epithelial cells then it will create some pores on the epithelial cells due to this what happens swelling takes place in the insect swellings as well as lysis takes place after swelling and lysis the death of insect happens okay this is what happens next bt toxin gene were isolated from bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into crop plants such as cotton so they were isolated bt cotton is isolated mainly from bacillus thuringiensis bt toxin is encoded by a gene called cry in the bacterium genes encoded by cry 1ac and cry 2ab control the cotton bollworms and those encoded by cry 1ab control corn borer so basically these genes are uh, these toxins are basically encoded by a gene called as cry okay cry okay the gene encoded by cry 1ac and cry 2ab basically control the cotton bollworms whereas the genes encoded by the cry 1ab control the corn borer very simple pest resistant plants protection against nematodes so many nematodes roundworm live in plant and animal including human beings so nematodes are basically insects called as roundworm they basically live in plant as well as in the animals they can live in human beings as well so nematode bellodigeni incognitia infects the roots of tobacco plants and cause reduction in yield so nematode which is called as melodigeni incognitia basically infects the roots of tobacco right roots of tobacco which is really harmful as it reduces the yield crop yield okay so we need the solution so that it cannot reduce reduce the yield let us strategy was coined by fire and mellow in 1998 to prevent this infestation that was based on process of rna interference rna i so the strategy or the solution was found out by fire and mellow in the 1998 so that it can prevent the reduction of yield by the melodigeni incognitia as it was infecting the roots of tobacco so the solution was the process of rna interference so let us find out how the how through the rna interference we can increase the crop yield okay rna i takes place in all the eukaryotic organism as a method of cellular defense so cellular defense is much required so that we can be protected so it basically takes place in the eukaryotic organisms as a method of cellular defense rna i okay RNA I involves the silencing of specific mRNA due to complementary ds RNA molecule that bind to and prevent translation of mRNA so basically RNA I silences the specific mRNA means it stops completely stops or blocks the expression of specific RNA mRNA due to because it was forming the complementary ds and RNA molecule which bind and prevent the translation of mrna the complementary this complementary mrna basically come from the infection by rna viruses or maybe transponds means they are the mobile genetic elements okay using agrobacterium vectors nematode specific gene were introduced into host plants 
so by the use of agrobacterium vectors nematode specific genes were introduced into the plant so basically we need the we need the nematode specific genes so that we can stop the infection by the nematode melodigeny incognitia as it was infecting the roots of tobacco plants and was causing the reduction in yield so by introducing the nematode specific gene we can stop this which can be which we get from agrobacterium vectors very simple then the introduction was such that it produced both sense and anti sense rna in a host cell when we introduced it into the host plant it produced both sense and anti sense rna okay which is very necessary then these two rnas being complementary to each other formed a ds rna that initiated rna infer interference so two strands these two strands are basically complementary to each other bend and form the ds rna which will lead to the rna i interference so now the mrna of nematode is basically silenced its expression is completely blocked and the parasite now cannot survive in the host body now the melody geni incognitia cannot infect the root of plants and do not cause the reduction in yield